Hi, today we are going to explain the storyline of a film called Death Sentence which was released back in 2007. Alright, so let's get straight to the storyline. There was a man named Nick who lived happily with his family. His wife was named Helen, his first child was named Brendan, and his second child was named Lucas. They were an affluent family and always lived in prosperity. Nick was also diligent in recording their important moments to be used as a memento. Nick was very proud of Brendan, because he was very great and always achieved something, in contrast to Lucas who was not too prominent. Brendan was a core player on the hockey team at his school and often became a MPV in matches. Nick even called him his golden child. One day, Nick attended Brendan match, and Brendan team won again. On the way home, Nick praised Brendan game and Brendan told him that he wanted to continue studying in Canada so he could become a professional hockey player. While they were talking, there were two cars driving from the opposite direction. Nick turned on his car's lights because the car was going two in the middle. After the two cars passed them, the two cars came back quickly and overtook Nick, before they turned onto another road. Nick seemed to feel wrong and wanted to hurry home, but his car was running out of gas. Nick stopped to fill up gas, and at that time Brendan went to buy drinks at a shop near them. Not long after, the two cars from earlier came back and stopped in front of the shop. The passengers got out and their appearances were like gun-toting gangsters. After that their attention turned to Brendan who raised his hand. One of them ordered a person named Joe to kill Brendan, so that he would be accepted into the gang. Joe then slashed Brendan neck with a machete, and they left Joe. Nick did not have time to help Brendan because he was hit by a car on his way to the store. As soon as Joe came out, Nick caught him, but Joe managed to escape. Joe then ran out into the street and was upset that his friends had left him. At that time a car passed by and Joe was hit. Meanwhile, Nick immediately approached Brendan who was still alive. He then took him to the hospital, and the officers immediately rushed to help him. Not long after, Helen and Lucas arrived, but the doctor suddenly approached them and told them that Brendan did not survive. They were all devastated to hear the sad news. It seemed that the police had taken care of the Brendan murder case and the suspect had been found. The case was handled by a detective named Wallace, and soon a trial would be held. Nick talked to his lawyer about the trial, and he seemed surprised that Joe might not get the death penalty that Nick wanted. From that conversation, Nick knew that Brendan was killed by Joe with the aim that Joe could be accepted into the gang and be called a real man. It made him angry and Nick seemed to think. Shortly thereafter, the trial was held, and Nick was given the opportunity to testify, but he instead said that he did not see anything because it was very dark. Since there were no other witnesses, the judge decided that Joe was declared acquitted of charges. After the trial was over, Joe walked out of court casually and was picked up by his gangmates. One of them was named Billy and he seemed to be the leader of the gang. He was very happy with Joe release, and said that he was very proud of him. From a distance, Nick watched them and followed them in the direction they were going. They headed to a place where Joe was left with a woman. Shortly thereafter, Nick came home and went to the tool room to look for something. He then took a small knife and wrapped it in a cloth. Nick hid the knife from his family and hurriedly went outside. Nick then came to where Joe was, and it seemed like he had a bad plan, but in the end he decided to leave. Just before leaving, he saw Joe coming out and his evil intentions were aroused again. He then followed Joe and was seen by a woman. Shortly thereafter, Nick found Joe and immediately attacked him. They had a fight, but in the end Nick stabbed Joe to death. Nick looked panicked and immediately drew his knife. After that, he came home and threw the knife into the river. At home, Nick looked devastated and regretted his actions. The next day, Wallace came to Nick's office to inform that Joe had been killed by someone. Meanwhile, Billy who learned about the death of Joe was very angry and raged at his friends. He then wanted revenge, and they discussed who the possible killers of Joe were. One of Billy's friends said that his younger brother had seen a well-dressed man last night. Billy took the newspaper and there was a photo of Nick because the newspaper reported the death of Brendan who was murdered. Billy told his friend to show Nick photo to his younger sibling. The sister in question turned out to be a woman who had seen Nick before he killed Joe. After seeing Nick photo, the woman confirmed that he was the man she saw last night. A few moments later, Nick who was on his way home from his office, was followed by Billy and his men. Nick was aware that he was being followed, and just before Billy's henchman shot him, Nick attacked him first. Nick then tried to run away and avoid Billy who shot from afar. Nick then entered an alley and kept running. In the midst of his escape, Nick threw away his bag to make it easier to escape. While passing through an alley, Nick entered the back of a building and continued to run avoiding Billy and his men who were chasing him. Nick continued to run up until he reached the parking lot. <laughs> Meanwhile, Billy divided his men to scatter to find Nick. 
one of his men went to the top of the parking lot and Nick saw him. Nick then hid from that person, but he kept getting closer. After getting close enough, Nick attacked him and they fought until they got into the car. In the car, Nick trapped the person with his seat belt and reversed the car causing the car to crash. They were in a high enough place, so the person Nick trapped was probably dead. After that, Nick drove his car and went home. The next day, Billy's men broke into his office and delivered the package directly to Nick. Nick then opened the package and it turned out that the contents were a bag that he threw away when he was running away. Nick then opened the bag and inside was a photo of him and his family, but there were red pen marks on the heads of his children and wife. On the back of the photo was a telephone number, and Nick quickly dialed the number. After the phone was connected, Billy talked to Nick and threatened him that he would do something to Nick's family. Nick then quickly left while calling Helen to make sure he was okay. Nick then asked Lucas and told Helen to wait at home until he returned. After calling Helen, now Nick called Wallace and informed her that her family was under threat. Shortly thereafter, Nick came home in a panic and immediately checked all the windows to make sure they were closed. Helen and Lucas were confused by his attitude, but Nick did not tell them. Wallace then came to Nick's house and asked Nick to explain what really happened. Because Nick never explained, Wallace left in annoyance, but Nick chased him and begged Wallace to help him stop all that. Wallace said she would help him, but Nick had to do whatever the police asked him to do. Evening came, and there were two policemen standing guard in front of Nick's house. Nick did not sleep and just sat in the living room. Not long after, when his family was asleep, Nick heard a car horn from outside. Nick then saw it from the window and the two police officers on guard were dead. Nick was immediately shocked and it turned out that Billy's men were already in his house. Nick then fought with one of them and managed to beat him, but the other one came and held a firearm. Nick then fled to the top floor because the man kept shooting at him. In the end Nick was caught, as well as Helen and Lucas who were dragged into the living room. Nick ran to save them, but Billy immediately shot them one by one. After that, Billy's group left Nick and his dying family. Shortly thereafter, Nick regained consciousness in the hospital and his injuries had been treated. Wallace came to him and scolded Nick for killing thugs to make his life chaotic. In addition, Wallace informed that Lucas was still alive and was being treated there. Nick immediately panicked and wanted to meet Lucas. He rushed to his room and asked Wallace to be given time to talk to Lucas. Wallace closed the door and Nick started talking to Lucas who was unconscious. Nick said how much he loved Lucas and hoped that he could recover. Not long after, Wallace who was outside checked Nick, and she was surprised because Nick ran away through the window. At the same time, Lucas began to regain consciousness and Wallace immediately called the doctor. Meanwhile, Nick went to his house and changed his clothes. He also cashed out the money in the account, then asked his partner to trace the phone number that Billy had sent. The number was found and it turned out to be from a bar. Nick then went to the bar and forced the bartender to tell the location of Billy. After being coerced and paid handsomely, the barman told Billy that Billy's men were nearby. After that, Nick went to a person named Bones. He went there to buy weapons, but Bones didn't seem to believe him. Nick then showed his large amount of money, and Bones began to show his collection of weapons. He offered several weapons to Nick, and Nick then bought a pistol and long rifle. Nick paid more for the gun, so Bones gave him good service. After the transaction was completed, Nick left, but he then heard a gun. Nick then turned around and saw Bones already brandishing a weapon. He asked if Nick was the one looking for Billy, and Bones then informed that he was Billy and Joe father. Even so, Bones said that he didn't care about Billy and everything that happened to Billy was none of his business. After that, Nick came home and prepared his weapon. He also shaved his head and wore a Brendan jacket. Once ready, Nick went to the location of Billy's henchmen and managed to defeat them. He then ordered Billy's men to call him and give a threatening message. After that, Nick shot him. Meanwhile, Billy was shocked when he heard gunshots. His father, Bones suddenly came and said that he cared about Billy, but Billy instead killed him and took his car away. After that, Nick went to Billy's headquarters and killed his men. Shortly thereafter Billy came and was shocked when he saw the corpses of his men. Billy finally confronted Nick and they exchanged fire. As that happened, another of Billy's men came and shot Nick in the back, but Nick managed to shoot him in the head. Now only Nick and Billy were left and they were both seriously injured. Billy then sat beside Nick, but Nick apparently still had another weapon and he took it out. After killing Billy and all of his men, Nick returned to his house and sat while watching his family's recorded video. At that time Wallace came with her men and surrounded Nick's house. Wallace entered and saw Nick watching the video. Wallace then informed that Lucas had started moving and seemed to be safe. Nick who heard the good news looked relieved. 